Welcome to Top Automotive, where we're gonna talk about some engine rebuilds on Porsches. So what I wanted to go over is we're gonna roll a clip how to properly assemble an engine, fit everything. This is gonna be not a super in-depth video because there's a lot more involved than to just slap an engine together. And this is the problem with a lot of engine builders is they use the term as rebuild and it sounds like, oh, the engine is fully built, but there's a lot of ways you can actually call it a rebuild and it's not an actual rebuild. So the engine that I'm gonna be building and I'm building here is a full rebuild where we start completely from ground up. We get all new parts, all our valves, everything's seated properly, everything's gonna be adjusted. So here's gonna be an example of our heads. These came back from a machine shop and some of the valves here we don't like we don't like how they're seating they're not super straight they haven't been cut 100 percent and it's pretty much in my book not a go so we're gonna have to recut these i'm gonna show the gaps these gaps that i'm showing here is when i'm shining the light through you can see that light is coming through now there's no tension on them but i don't want any light coming through even if there's no tension because that means this engine will run less efficient and it'll fail much quicker than if it was built properly. So I'm gonna have these valves recut and install them again yeah. and test. That's bad. So now that I got the valves recut, look at this fitment. I mean, big difference. It's, everything's fitting perfectly. There's no light showing through. And you can see the valve itself now is nicely cut. Now look at this cut, how nice it's pretty much perfectly circular cut. This is what we wanna see. We wanna see a nice cut. That way it can seat against the valve seat and not have problems with sealing. Another step we're gonna do is we're gonna install all our valve stem seals. This is a critical component. We want our valve stem seals to be fully seated on these engines. It's very easy to mess up this job and not fully seat them. There's a special tool that's involved by installing these valve seals. The valve seals have to go on all the way onto the valve guide. If they don't, they can possibly pop off and you'll have smoke and all sorts of crazy issues down the future because what's gonna happen is oil is gonna make it past the valve itself between the actual valve guide and it's gonna burn in the combustion. We don't want that. Next step is we're gonna replace all our valve springs. They have to be brand new. I don't reuse valve springs. Everything that goes into our engine builds is brand new as far as working components that can possibly break and have issues. And this is how we install the valve springs. We just, we're not gonna use anything fancy. This is the tool that we use to install them. As long as you're careful with it, you shouldn't be able to mar anything up. Now, when we're gonna be done with these installations, we always measure our cylinder head thicknesses to make sure we have consistent surfaces and they're cut properly, because if they're not cut properly, there's gonna be slight imperfection. If it's a couple thou out from cylinder on one bank, than cylinder on two bank, we can possibly have slight compression variation. And we don't want that. We want it to be perfect. We don't want any kind of deviating problems later on to have issues with. Most engine builders that are professionals and do this for a living and they enjoy what they do, they're gonna do all these tests and they're gonna check everything. Some of these guys that just slap them together, they don't probably understand how critical these tests are, these measurements. And this is what really separates a good engine build from a poor engine build. And this will also give you longevity. This will give you a much more reliable performance. You can build the highest compression possible on a naturally aspirated engine. And same build goes into the turbo or naturally aspirated engines. There's really no difference as far as fitment. The only difference is gonna be, you know, slightly different components, much more stronger rods and just a stronger, beefier bottom end because there's more pressure involved, but we're also gonna have less compression as well for the turbocharged engines. So here's a good example of a bad assembly. So we have this cylinder with scoring. This was a Nicosil cylinder that was actually designed for this particular engine, the same engine that we're building here, the M96, M97 variant. And it's scored up because they improperly installed the oil control ring. As you can see, the oil control ring has dug in to the piston and that has damaged and popped out and actually scored up the cylinder. This is a huge problem. It's easy to miss. What happened is the expander ring inside actually overlapped itself upon installation. This only can happen when rings are installed and the pistons are actually tapped into the bores. This is a type of damage that you don't want to happen to your build because if this happens, oh my goodness, it'll completely take out your engine. You're gonna have oil consumption. 
here's a clear indication this is what happens when you have an improperly assembled engine. Oil will burn right through the pistons, it'll burn into the combustion, and it'll just cloud up the whole shop when you start it up, and you'll know you have a big problem. Sometimes it doesn't happen right away, sometimes it takes several thousand miles because it has to dig into the liner and damage it. But this is what we're trying to avoid. We're trying to avoid all these problems that can happen with the engine build. And the most critical components to install is gonna be our piston rings. All our pistons, rings, rods, everything gets perfectly balanced. If the cylinders are deviating in weight, we take that metal off and grind it down and we make sure all our pistons have, basically not even a gram, I mean, we wanna make sure it's, everything's perfect. There is a difference between, you know, six grams or a few grams, but we want it to be almost spot on. We don't wanna have any deviation because I want this engine to run perfect. So we weigh everything, we measure everything, and we cut what we need to cut. That way everything's balanced. Our next step is gonna to be to cut all our rings. We wanna make sure all our gaps are correct. So we're using total seal rings, which is what I prefer to use. This is gonna be a second ring that we're gonna use. It's gonna be total seal on the bottom. Oil control ring is gonna be also made by total seal. So everything gets fitted. There's gonna be no gaps that are gonna be uneven. We wanna make sure everything is completely perfect. So here's a ring. We wanna make sure the butt joints on the ring are perfectly flat. We don't wanna have butt joints that are possibly canted slightly or beveled because that's gonna be a problem with ring sealing. We don't wanna have improper compression. And it's really critical that these rings get properly fitted. So on this one, we're running 19 thou on the second rings. And of course, on the top rings, we're running right at around 18 thou of uh, gap. So total seal rings, if some of you are not familiar, they're basically, uh, there's two rings on top of one another. There's a groove made in there and that pretty much offsets by 180 degrees and doesn't allow blow by to occur like on a standard ring. This dramatically decreases oil consumption and oil burning, smoking when the vehicles are driven or started and then you have oil consumption problems. This completely almost pretty much eliminates it by 70%. This is why we choose that method because Nicosil is a very hard material and that really requires a proper break-in on a regular ring. We also light check. This is how we light check our rings. We use a flashlight, we check the gaps. We wanna make sure there's no half moon light shining through because if it is, we scrap the ring, we get a brand new ring. We don't wanna have any kind of problems later on when we break the engine in and let's hope that it'll seat. But what if it doesn't seat in the bore? We don't wanna be disassembling and redoing it. So do it right, do it one time, don't have to come back. So now we're gonna be installing all our pistons inside of our cylinder case. Now this is how we install them. After we install the pistons, we're gonna rotate this engine. Now this is a, uh, make sure there's no movement or some weird crunchiness going on. We wanna make sure everything's rotating smooth and we always rotate them by hand to ensure that there's no problems. The crankshaft, when we assemble the crankshaft and the cradle and everything, everything's clean. We blow out all the debris out of all the valleys galleys that can possibly have metal or dirt. We use an ultrasonics cleaner to clean all our engine components. Very critical. We don't want to have any micro metals. We don't want to have a problem where there's potential metal or some kind of debris. Then when you start the engine, it right away takes out your rods or scores them up and then you have more problems on your hands. So it's very critical that these components get checked, cleaned, cleaned and cleaned. There's a lot of cleaning involved. It's constantly cleaned. If it's not cleaned properly, you're gonna have a problem, so it's best to clean it, especially the diamond coatings on the actual Nicosil cylinder bores. That's really critical to wipe until the Kim wipes or whatever you use as far as lint-free with brake cleaner, it's completely white. There's no gray residue, because if it is, that's what's gonna wear out your rings, and prematurely, the engine will start to wear out at a short period of time. Here's our assembling. We're gonna assemble everything in order. Of course, the crankshaft has already been assembled with uh, assembly lube, get everything together, get everything working. Okay, so as you guys know, the IMS bearing is a problem, so we don't even use a bearing style in here. We use a bushing style IMS solution, which is actually made by Ellen Engineering, and it's a bushing design with an aluminum section that has no ball bearings. It's basically a plain bearing like you'd have in a crankshaft. So that's what we're gonna use in this engine, because this is gonna be a high performance, high revving engine. Now we need to get to our IMS shaft. Before we install our IMS shaft and made it to the crankshaft with the chain, 
we want to make sure that our IMS shaft is pinned. So what we do is we drill holes on three sections of the IMS shaft and we actually pin it. We put a pin through it because they are known sometimes to pretty much spin through, cause engine failure on a high oil rev. Now it is overkill, but that's what we do. We pin them because we don't want them to fail. And now we're going to install the IMS shaft all together with the crank cradle and with the oil baffle system at the top. And we're going to install it into the crank case and then that actually goes into our case halves and then our case halves get glued with a special dry bond type sealant that Porsche uses. After this, this is when we assemble all our pistons into the bores, into the cylinder bores. Everything gets properly assembled. There is also a retaining ring that I'm gonna install right now with a special rod as I'm gonna slam it forward. This will make sure the retaining ring gets fully locked and then we check with our camera to make sure that retaining ring has locked in into a groove on the actual crank rod because what's gonna happen if it doesn't, it's gonna pop off as soon as you start the car and then the engine will blow up. You don't want that to happen, so we make sure that our retaining rings are all seated. Every one of the retaining rings that we pretty much slam into place, as you can see, there's a lot of force involved that just hit that one, there's a lot of force. Every one of them gets jammed in there with this kind of force because we want to make sure it gets in there but before we remove the actual rod we check with our camera to make sure they're all seated okay so what we need to do now before we install our cylinder heads is i actually did this already i pre-measured everything that way everything was perfect and i aligned it but what's important is deck clearance which i already checked but this is how we check our deck clearances to make sure our cylinder does not come up and hit the cylinder head which happens on some of these builds so we have to make sure we have about close to eight thou between eight thou to six thou gap or we're gonna hit our deck possibly it's a very possible situation here's the footage when this occurred actually on the build that we did previously this build was not done by us but the reason why this car showed up was this was the reason and here is a cylinder that actually had contact on the cylinder head itself. The piston has all this wear. That's basically due to only having less than a thou of a gap. And what happens is when the piston rocks, it would hit it at certain RPMs. And that's a problem because you'll destroy your engine. Our next step is we're gonna dress up the engine. We're gonna put the cylinder heads, our cylinder gaskets, everything's gonna get assembled. Everything's gonna be cleaned. We also will go through with alcohol and just clean all our mating surfaces where the glue is gonna be gluing the components together. That way there's no oil residue and possibly develop an oil leak after you assemble. So that's critical to make sure everything's clean. So here, this cylinder has already been installed. So now we need to install our hydraulic lifters, as you can see here, and our camshafts, one of the other important items. And our camshafts are gonna get timed. There's a whole process of timing these camshafts. And I'm not gonna get into that because it's a lot of work explaining it. So this is just gonna be a quick camshaft demonstration. They're gonna be installed already into this cylinder head. And then our cam covers are gonna go on top of that. And there's special tooling used to install these camshafts. And here's our engine fully assembled. Here's everything that we put together. And uh, this is what it looks like after everything's done. Today, I have this engine ready to be installed inside this 1999-996-911, fully built. So now we're gonna put it in the car, start the vehicle, see how it runs, do the break-in, do the initial break-in, change the oil, and continue to do a uh, drive-in break-in for about a thousand miles. We're gonna change oil in it twice. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe, we'll see you next time. Also wanted to say, we cannot provide any technical support if you're building your own engine. Taco Automotive does not take any responsibility if you damage your engine or assemble it wrong or hurt yourself. So this is not a DIY video, this is an informational video. So please take it at your own risk. Thank you, we'll see you next time.